Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wassalamu ala asyrafil mursalin sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim. Wa la haula wa la quwwata illa billahil alil azim. Wa tub alaina ya maulana innaka antat tawwabur rahim. Alhamdulillah Uh, we are entering into the first 10 days of Ramadan. I hope that everyone has had a great start to Ramadan and may this momentum take us uh, into greater hikes as Ramadan progresses. Now, uh, last week we talked about the prophetic household and some were asking me how exactly was the Prophet ﷺ in his household? How did he operate? How did he move about? How did he interact with his family members? Because we want to relate it to our current context today whereby we see our family members every day for most of us now the prophet sallallahu alaihi the general uh, principle that he adheres to when he's in the household is mentioned in a hadith uh, that is told by sayyidatna aisha that the, when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he's in the, when he's at home all right what he does is he goes about serving the family members he goes about helping out his family in their chores but when it's the time to for prayers and he will attend to prayers immediately. So that's a general maxim. So when it, come, when it comes to prayer time, he'll go for his prayers. But then before that, he'll be busy helping out the family members. Now helping out, as we will look subsequently, involves him helping out whether he helps them with their, ch their chores, he interacts with them, he shares knowledge with them, all right? he addresses their, addresses their problems. So some of, the, some of the things he does at home is that he will mend his own shoes. Um, he will actually sew his own clothes, all right? When they are torn, he will sew it himself. And other things that is required of him, if the wife, if, if the, one of the wives need help, and henceforth, he will make himself useful. So the general principle here is to make yourself useful at home, to always find means and ways to help, all right? So have a niche at home. Some I see some on social media, the husband can cook, and they give the wife some time to rest. The husband can fold some clothes, so that takes away the additional uh, burden that the wife has to do in addition to what she already has on her, on her plate. So that's one. Now, one of the things that we need to bear in mind, so this is Ramadan, and I heard some concerns that were raised to me all right, when in, my, in my daily classes and henceforth, they were asking me, so this is the month of Ramadan, it's a time of worship. So it's a time for worship. I cannot get something out of my husband because he's going to be busy concentrating on worship. All right? And he'll be busy focusing on, on, on the Quran, on the Zikrullah. I said, that's good. That's a start. But remember, our worship must adhere to the best worshipper. That's the Prophet Wasallam. Okay, so there are three things I want to highlight today that we perhaps that we can actually take heed from. Now, in our in, in our enthusiasm to carry out acts of worship, which is of course encourage Ramadan, is called Shahrul Ibadah. Right, it's the month of Ibadah. It's a month of uh, of of divine closeness. We must understand that being close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala must follow. The person who is closest to Allah, the Prophet. Now, the Prophet, he is firstly a very consultative person. You notice that throughout his sirah that we have learned thus far, in anything that he does, he will always ask people. He will always ask people for their opinions, right? He will always be more sensitive to what people are going through. So the Prophet ﷺ is the same in his household. I give you one simple example in the incident of Hudaybiyah. After the signing of the Hudaybiyah agreement, now the companions, they didn't take too well to it because of the fact that first you are supposed to enter into, it happened uh, on the sixth, uh, it happened uh, uh, at a time whereby they were supposed to enter into uh, Makkah to perform their Umrah. And they have been separated from Makkah for so long. So they were eager to go into Makkah and they were happy to be performing Umrah. But because of the Hudaybiyah agreement, they were only allowed to do it the, the following year. They were only allowed to do it the following year. So they were not allowed to do so. This happens on the sixth year of Hijrah. Okay, so they can't do it. So they were upset and they also upset because of the fact that they couldn't, that the agreement was unfair. The agreement didn't, it was, is obviously uh, agreed upon with it hinging largely uh, on, the fa uh, on the favor of the Mushrikins of Mecca. So they were unhappy, they can't go into, they were unhappy and they were uh, with, with the terms of the agreement and the outcome of the agreement and the fact that they couldn't perform their Umrah. In that situation, the Prophet ﷺ says that if you can complete the Umrah now, you have to do your tahallul, which means that you have to shave your heads and then you have to actually slaughter the animals that you brought with you. 
Okay, so that was why he told them the companions didn't react. They didn't react. Let's get this right. They didn't, they didn't react because they were disobedient to the prophet. It's just that they were overwhelmed by the outcome of the treaty. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi seeing that there was no reaction from them, what did he do? All right, he went into his tent and sought the advice of his wife, Umu Salama. So this is one thing. So we, we, we move away from this notion, or right, we always like to say this, that you know, I, I see it better in Malay. And this is, sometimes I hear it so many times, some people saying it, Kau perempuan apa tahu? Sometimes I watch dramas, all right? sometimes I watch, uh, sometimes I, I, I see some public arguments, they say, Kau perempuan apa tahu? You women, what do you know? Uh, trying to undermine the authority of the women or the intelligence of the women and trying to put our authority as a natural as a natural platform for us to be intelligent. Uh, but then we refuse to ask for opinions, so we become very aloof and arrogant. The Prophet, all right, he asked Umu Salaman. Umu Salaman says, go out. All right, you are the one, you the one who start shaving your heads off, you're shaving your head off, you're the one that start to slaughter your animals, and then they'll follow. And the Prophet did just that, and the companions followed. That's lesson number one. So while we are planning the Ramadan program, we are not planning for ourselves, dear leader of the household, dear man. We are not planning things for ourselves. We are planning for the betterment of the household. And you must take into consideration what everyone else is, everyone else is feeling, what everyone else is preferring to do. It's not just about us. We might find joy in reciting the Quran and we might want them to inculcate the love of reciting the Quran to our family members. But they will also have some preferences and they have their own means and they have their own ideas of how the family can come together and be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or they have their own ideas of how we can actually do worship while at the same time not compromise on other quality time with our family members. So everyone has their own ideas, even the children. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, he treasures. So one of the things that, even though it's Ramadan, it does not mean that we cut off times with our family members. What more if you're going to be seeing them for since dawn till dusk? You're going to see them all the time. Are we going to lock ourselves in our worship room, in our prayer room, and then after that, let everything else in the house take its, take its course? No. You're present all the time. The Prophet Wasallam, he appreciates his time with his, family, with his family members. i give you another example. There was one instance whereby he, he has a Persian neighbor. And this Persian neighbor, he specializes in cooking soup. Right? He's cooking some kind of soup. And one day, he invited the Prophet Wasallam. Asked the Prophet Wasallam. Can you will try to come over to my place? And then we have, I have some soup prepared. The Prophet says, I have Aisha at home. I have Aisha at home. Can I bring her with me? Can I bring Aisha with me? The neighbor says, no. Because I want to appreciate my time with you. What he's not understanding is that the Prophet, that's the time the Prophet usually has with Aisha. And the Prophet appreciates his time with Aisha, with his household. The Prophet says, no. Then if, you, if I can't bring my wife, then I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't accept an invitation. The Persian guy asked the second time. And the same thing the Prophet asked. Aisha is at home. Can I bring her along? And he says, no. So the third time, the Persian guy gets the idea. So he understands now. The Prophet treasures, appreciates the presence. Because that's supposed to be the time I have with my wife. So if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it with her. So if you're inviting me, you have to invite me with her. Because I really want that time spent with her. So the Prophet Wasallam. Finally, obliged because the neighbor says, oh, when he says, can you, can you bring, can, can I bring my wife? And the Persian neighbor says, yes, please bring your wife. So he brought Salina Aisha and then that's the case is the issue is resolved. Now, the point here is that look at how the Prophet is he's insistent. This Persian neighbor has to ask three times. It's not the Prophet is being difficult. But I said, no, this is my wife's time. She has a right to me. Right? She has, we, have a, we, have, we as husbands have a right, we, we, we agreed upon this, that in, this, in terms of our schedule, which is why I talked about the importance of scheduling last time, that this is the time that we are supposed to spend together, so I'm not going to take it away at my own pleasure, and then I compromise my time with her, because the time with, this, with my family member is very precious. The same goes now in this circuit breaker period, when we're at home, now the time in family is very important. But I need to do worship, because it's Ramadan, I want to be close to my family members, I want to be close to Allah SWT. The Prophet says, the Prophet says, remember this hadith, all right? By the end of this whole thing, you're going to remember this hadith. Khairukum, khairukum li ahli. Wa ana khairukum li ahli. The best amongst you are those who, are, who treat their family member the best. And I treat my family member the best. Treat them best. This can be a reason for you to get a prosperous Ramadan, uh, a blessed Ramadan. This might be a reason for you to get Laylatul Qadr. Because of the fact that you treat your family the way the Prophet wants you to. Right? I give you another example. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu is therefore very sensitive to the needs of his family members. We heard there was, he even knows when the family member is unhappy about something. 
she, he, the Prophet used to tell Aisha, I know when you are angry with me. And Aisha asked me, when, when am I angry with you? you will be, when you are happy with me, you will say, all right, you will mention my name, all right? Oh, by the Lord of Muhammad. All right, so I will know by the Lord of Muhammad. So you have to show that you're happy with me by the Lord of Muhammad. And when you are unhappy, you will say, no, by the Lord of Ibrahim. Because you are so angry, you don't want to say my, you want to say my name. See, the Prophet ﷺ is more sensitive to what is liked or dislike. So the Prophet ﷺ, he knows. And he's, he takes effort to actually acknowledge, to understand what the wife is feeling at the point of time. And we don't do that sometimes in Ramadan. So someone asked me, Ustaz, what if the Imam, or if the Imam when he leads the Salat, he recites long surah, or he recites long aurat, and I have such a long day, I'm tired, and now even that, I have to take out the children because the Imam's at the front, he's already in his zone, and then the children behind, they are playing around, and he's not going to correct them, and then I'm the one who has to attend to them, and some of them fell asleep halfway, I have to take my kid to the room. So a lot of things, and her husband is just, Bent on just getting the trawih done, on getting it done properly, getting it done in the way, in the in the most in in most in the most uh, um, spiritual way, spiritually fulfilling way possible. Again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is sensitive, so he understands what the wife is feeling. Or the wife has had a long day. Our wives have had a long day. All right, they have to clean the house, and we are not really helping because we are already in our zone reciting the Quran. The least we can do is to be more sensitive to them in our choice of surah. So what we can do is to ask our wives, how do you want this trawe to be? All right? How, how do you want this trawe to be? Do you have some intermittent breaks in between? Do you have breaks in between to play with the children? Do you have breaks in between to communicate with the children? To play, all right? To have a conversation with the wife? Can that be the case? Can we have a trawe half -way? Since our kids are young, we let them off early. We do eight. And in another three of rakas, we have an intimate time in our trawe to just two of us. And then we keep the trawe short. And we can have more quality time after that. These are things that we can do. The Prophet is most sensitive to that. So the Prophet he says once, all right, this, we know this hadith so well, but sometimes you don't understand the significance of this hadith. The Prophet all right, there was once there was one instance whereby he was seated with, all right, he was in the, in the premise of Masjid an Nabawi. All right, there was a performance by the Ethiopian performance at the premise of Masjid an Nabawi. And what did the Prophet do? All right, he knows that Aisha likes the performance. So Aisha was watching. So the Prophet put a cloak. He puts up a cloak as a barrier. All right, so that the, 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 the modesty of Aisha is preserved while at the same time she can enjoy the performance. And the Prophet held it up and she will ask Aisha intermittently, ask her, are you done? Are you okay with that? Are you, do you want, do you, want do you still? And she will, he will keep holding it up. And this is the Prophet Wasallam. He will keep holding it up until she becomes bored of the performance or then she says no, then she's done. And the Prophet will then remove the cloak and take her into the house. This also shows how the Prophet is very sensitive. He knows that Aisha is enjoying the performance and he doesn't want to detach herself of the pleasure of what she's pursuing. Sometimes we must admit, all right, in our household, our children and ourselves, our spouse and ourselves, they have our own. We cannot force our partners, our spouses to have the same passion as us. All right, have the same passion as us. Sometimes our wives, all right, we like to read the Quran. Perhaps our wives, they, they, they appreciate the Quran, but they read it lesser than us, but they like to read something else. For example, they have a book that they want to read. All right, they have, they, have, they have their preferences for books. Now, we have to appreciate them for that. So as long as they appreciate the Quran and have already spent time with that, they want to spend more time on the books they read, let them because they have. It's something they like to do. And it's Ramadan and I know we want, to, we want to actually elevate our worship profile by the same time elevating how we appreciate our wife. Yeah, she's not doing anything wrong in the first place. She's taking a break, doing something that's permissible, doing something that's nothing wrong, that's, that's not wrong in the first place. So let her be. Or some people, some wives, they like to spend more time in the kitchen, right? Sometimes the, 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 we feel that, oh, this is Ramadan, you must increase your acts of worship. But to her, the worship comes in the kitchen, right? She wants to work out, she wants to cook a special, she wants to, she wants, she wants to cook up a, a meal that's only going to make you pleased when you break your fast. So let her, she finds joy in that, to experiment, to cook and everything else, all right? She has already taken care of the children. She has, so, you know, it's all about division of things. So my point here today is that let's not misunderstand Ramadan. Yes, it's an act of worship. It's a month of worship. But worship needs to be understood the way that the Prophet wants us to understand it. That it compromises nobody. It compromises nobody. So Prophet Salam, all right, he's aware of his responsibilities. We go back to our lesson last week, the three, the three realms, the individual realm, the family realm, and the societal realm. And this is the same thing we apply today in this week. Right? We have, I've given enough stories to show how the Prophet is sensitive. That he is always consultative. That he is always asking. He is always seeking 
to find the best, the most optimum arrangement that pleases everyone in the household without compromising his ibadah at the same time. Let's work towards that. All right, let us, well, we are the main decision maker. We might feel like we are the main decision maker, but our main decision that we eventually make must take into active consideration, all right, what the others in the household feel. They are all stakeholders in the house as well. So may we have a fulfilling Ramadan, a Ramadan that everyone enjoys, a Ramadan that everyone feels spiritually elevated, a Ramadan which everyone feels like they have a part in it to play as well. A Ramadan which everyone feels that we become tighter, we become in, in our bonds as a family member, that because it's most memorable Ramadan. It's already memorable as it is, but because more memorable because of how we go about doing it. May Allah preserve us this Ramadan. May Allah preserve everyone around us. All right, look out for everyone around us. Look out for our neighbors. Look out for everybody. All right, have a positive mindset. All right, and only look out for positive things around us. Do not look out for negative people and do not, do not look out for negative. You look, you're reading the social media, you hear negative people and they have very cynical comments. Leave them. All right, let's focus on positivity because the thing that takes us further in life and further through challenges will be a very positive attitude empowered by positive people and positive experiences around us. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala. وبركاته